All right, I want to talk about truss rods and how to adjust them, what they are, how they work. Because it's my belief that every guitar player should know how to adjust their truss rod and do a basic setup on their instrument. Just like everyone should know how to sharpen their kitchen knives. Back in the day, guitars were made with solid wood necks. No truss rod, no support of any kind. Like this one. This is a 30s or 40s Carbonell, I'm not really sure. But the point is, there is no truss rod. So I can't adjust this neck at all. Whatever happens to it, happens to it, aside from doing major surgery. This one happens to be okay, but it's not uncommon for them to be very warped. And that's the problem with solid wood guitar necks. Whatever happens to them, happens to them. Now I can demonstrate that using my 2D Tele. This is a Fender Custom Shop 2D Tele. So when you have strings on the guitar, as you tighten them, you increase the string tension. And the string tension will pull on the neck. And it'll pull it up like that. And that's what we call up bow. When a neck is bowed, generally that's what we mean. And because of this, people started putting metal rods inside of the guitar neck. So on some older guitars, you'll see it'll have a little sticker on it, maybe up here or something, and it'll say steel reinforced neck. And that just means that there is a steel rod that runs down the neck under the fingerboard. This neck is not adjustable. You can't do anything with it. It's just there to strengthen the neck. But at some point, somebody invented the adjustable truss rod, which is what we have nowadays. And what that is, is a steel rod, again, that runs down the neck, but it has an adjustable nut. And usually it'll be at the headstock, and other times it's at the heel of the neck, which is this part. And what happens when you tighten that nut, it forces that rod to flex, and it flexes in the opposite direction of the string tension. And the more you tighten that nut, the more it flexes and counteracts that string tension. So if your neck is bowed, and you tighten the truss rod, it's gonna straighten that neck out. It's gonna counteract the string tension, pulling the neck straight. Now what happens if you tighten it too much? If you start here and you go straight and you keep going, you're gonna get what's called back bow. That's when the neck bows backwards. Now back bow is bad because the guitar at the first couple frets is essentially unplayable. It's just gonna buzz. And this can happen naturally too, just from temperature and humidity. Different pieces of wood flex different ways when they swell and contract. And sometimes what happens is that the neck will be back bowed and you'll have an adjustable truss rod and you'll loosen it to allow the string tension to pull the neck more. And it'll start to straighten out, but it'll get to a point where it's still back bowed, but the truss rod nut is all the way loose. And then you're kind of stuck with the back bowed neck. Now there's different things that you can do. You can plane the board, which is to say you could remove wood from it to flatten the fretboard. You could clamp the neck into an up bow and heat it using steam. But this video is just for what I would call a healthy guitar. So later somebody invented what's called a two-way truss rod. And what that is, is basically what it sounds like. It acts like a normal truss rod, where when you tighten it, it pulls the neck back into a back bow. But if you loosen it all the way, it will re-engage and tighten the other way, causing the neck to flex this way. This is fantastic because then you can adjust the neck any way you want, aside from this way. The standard is a one-way truss rod. You don't see two-way truss rods on most production line instruments, but they are out there and it's worth knowing about. So that's enough talk. Let's go adjust some truss rods and see how they work. Also, this isn't a Fender custom shop. It's a, it's a template for making guitars. But that's another video. So here's a Gibson guitar. I like their truss rods because it's pretty easy to see them. So this piece here is called the truss rod cover. Your guitar may or may not have one. This one obviously does, so we're gonna go ahead and take that off. Just two screws. Also, go ahead and get yourself a little magnet tray so you don't lose your screws. It's gonna save your butt. All right, so let's take that off. And what you see here is the truss rod nut. It's called an acorn nut, this kind. And to adjust that, we use a little wrench. If you bought your guitar new, it probably comes with the tool that you need. So righty-tighty, clock. 
clockwise is to tighten it, counterclockwise is to loosen it, lefty loosey. Again, if we tighten, we counteract the string tension more. If we loosen, we allow the strings to pull the neck more. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that back where it was. Now a Fender style guitar is the same concept. They just don't have a cover on there and usually you use an Allen wrench. And same thing, righty tighty, lefty loosey. And if your headstock looks like this, where there is no truss rod adjustment, then chances are your adjustment is at the heel. I hope you can see that there is actually a slotted screw right there. And you actually have to take the neck off the guitar to adjust the truss rod and put it all back together. Yes, it's a pain in the butt. And then if you have an acoustic guitar like a Martin, not this, the truss rod adjustment is actually gonna be inside the sound hole up against the heel of the neck. And you're gonna need a tool that looks like this. It's just a really long Allen wrench. So when we talk about the curvature of the neck, we measure that in what's called relief. So if I take my neck, if I bend it, I'm adding relief. This neck has more relief than this neck. But let's assume our neck is dead flat, like this piece of MDF. If we take a straight edge and put it along the top of the neck, there's gonna be no gap between the two. So this neck has zero relief. If we start to bend the neck, there's gonna be a gap underneath. And that measurement, that distance is what we call relief. Typically relief is measured in thousandths of an inch. And we use these things called feeler gauges. You've probably seen them. They're usually in the automotive section of any store. So let's actually adjust the truss rod. The guitar has to be tuned to pitch whatever that may be for you. So let's measure the relief in this neck. We'll use that straight edge we used earlier. I lay it between the D and G strings. I'm gonna start with 9 thousandths, 0 .009. That's typically where I set my guitars. I take the feeler gauge and I put it under the straight edge along the fretboard. I usually do the seventh fret and then you just slide it between the fret and the straight edge and you can see this one goes pretty smoothly. There's no resistance there. So I have more the nine thousandths relief. So I take my truss rod wrench and I turn clockwise to tighten. And then I'm gonna check again. I can feel it still just goes through there, so I'm gonna tighten a little more. Now if I try to push it through, it actually lifts the straight edge up a little bit. So I have less than nine thousandths relief. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen the truss rod a little bit. Now it glides through, but I can feel it touching the straight edge. So that tells me that there is nine thousandths of an inch relief. There's a gap of nine thousandths of an inch between the straight edge and the top of the fret. Now I understand you may not have a straight edge like this, or maybe not yet, but you can still check your relief without a straight edge. Because you can actually, you can actually use the string of the guitar as a straight edge. So if we hold down the first fret, and then somewhere around, I usually do the 14th fret with my pinky, and then I take my index finger, and I can check at the seventh fret if there's a gap. Because now that string, because it's under tension, is acting like our straight edge. Now when I do it like this, I don't usually measure. I just kind of look for a small gap. Now. This is a 0.6 millimeter pick, an orange Tortex, and this doesn't even fit in that gap, so it's less than that. I'll usually just tap the string at the seventh fret, and if there's just a small gap, you can kind of hear it, so let's see. That's a string hitting the fret. If our neck was back bowed, when we do this, the string would be resting on the fret. And if we had way too much relief, when we did this, there would be a much larger gap. So again, I don't usually measure when I do it this way, but if I'm just going for a quick adjustment, this is how I'll do it. Now, of course, this is all personal preference. You might like more relief or less relief than I do. If you have a very heavy hand or you use really thick strings, you might want a little bit more relief. If you have a gentle, light touch, you can get away with a much straighter neck and a much lower action. Just go ahead and try a few different things. Give the truss rod a quarter turn one way, see what it does. 
and see how it affects the playability of the guitar. And give it a quarter turn the other way and see how it feels after that. Just be aware that there is a risk of damaging the truss rod if you over tighten it. As long as you're just being aware of what you're doing and not applying too much force, you shouldn't run into those issues. Well, that sums up truss rods. If you find that your truss rod needs more than what I just did to this guitar, chances are you should probably just go see a professional. If you're going to tighten your truss rod and it's giving you a lot of resistance, don't do it. <laughs> the only way you can really break a truss rod is to over tighten it. If you have any questions about truss rods, if any of that wasn't clear, just let me know and I'll try to clarify. Otherwise, get yourself some screwdrivers, some Allen wrenches, a straight edge, some feeler gauges, and get to work.